these, uh, you know, mostly great family pictures I don't want to lose. I'd love to get them on the computer, but the way I've been doing it is painfully slow. I bought a, a scanner. They're not very expensive. I think it was an Epson Perfection uh, 1670s, a couple hundred bucks, or even less. Right. has a little slide holder. You can do five at a time. It takes about two minutes to do five slides. Mm -hmm. Well, Ray has a much better solution, because this is going to take me the rest of my life to convert my That's thousands right. of slides. <laughs> This is using your, your, your digital camera to do this. That's right. Okay. I, now, this happens to be a Canon 5D, but it could be any digital camera. Okay. okay. Better, the better the camera, the better the image. Well, I'm going to talk about that. Oh, okay. Because people kind of go overboard on that part. You don't need part. to. Okay. You don't need to, and I'll explain why. Then you need either a bellows or an extension tube or a macro lens that can go uh, uh, down to cover the area of a slide. I started to say one-to-one, -one, but that assumes that the format of the uh, digital camera is full 35 millimeters. Which it is on, on this 5D, on the, but most cameras it is not. That's right. So you need to be able to use extension tubes or magnification to the point that you can cover the entire slide. Okay, so th the idea is that when I take a picture of this, it should be exactly to fill the frame. Exactly. Okay. okay. Right. So then the next thing is you need a slide holder, All right. and I have one that's an old Nikon that I had with my Nikon F, and I've put in a Novaflex uh, adapter here, and this is a Nikon macro lens, and uh, connected it to my 5D. <laughs> so it's, it's a kludge, all right? Yeah, but you know, you're, you're going to do it once, you, yeah, you know, and you're going right. to go through a lot of pictures. But you can now, get a, a Nikon 990. Yeah. And it'll do a macro, and all you need is a slide holder. So if you had the right lens, you can yeah. do the, the macro. Right. Now, the other problem with this, and this is why you can't just use a plain old scanner, is that you don't bounce light off of this. You have to shine light through it. So how are we going to get a light source on the other end of the lens? Here? Two ways to do that. Here, I have this remote cable that lets me put my flash down here, oh, all right. and there is a, uh, a white screen here behind this. The slide screen. holder has an opaque uh, uh, translucent it's to screen. To diffuse yeah. the, that. And, uh, and this with this cable, this is TTL. So this, this thing will turn the flash off almost instantly. It uses very little power because I'm shooting right into it. Oh, okay. So you can get thousands of slides on one charge of your That's flash. That's excellent. Okay. Now, if you don't have this cable, the other way to do it is mount the, the flash on the camera and put a white card out oh, here. Oh, yeah, flash and bounce it off. Bounce it okay. off. And again, okay. TTL. All right. Now, you, it'll uh, run your battery down quicker. Right. That's fine. <laughs> That's deal. fine. You know. All right. So I've got this kind of crazy Rube Goldberg setup here. Yeah. Now what? Now then, all you have to do is this holds a slide, so I put in the slide, okay. and I can actually fire it from the camera. Now I see you have your USB connection going into the computer. Yeah. And I'm going directly into the computer, and now here's the slide up on the computer. Now this is Canon software that lets you do this, Yes, this many cameras can Canon, do this. And, uh, as far as I know, all of them. Yeah. So you have a stack of slides now. Now how good is the image quality going to be here? Okay, let's talk about that. Okay. A lot of people say, well, Ray, what resolution should I scan at? Right. Now, if I was scanning at the full 12 megapixels of this, or, by the way, I'm shooting raw, yeah. and I've got it set to produce a 6 megapixel image. So you're not using the highest quality. No. Why not? Because at 6 mega si me megapixels, mm -hmm. I can see the grain. Oh, you're already higher resolution, in other words, in the image itself. Right. So you don't need more image. I've heard people quality. say, oh, I scan all my slides at 4,000 DPI. And I said, uh, you image the grain very well. <laughs> you get a lot of grain. Yeah. So, all right, so that's interesting. So this is about a six megapixel image, that's, in other words. That's Ray Maxwell's personal opinion. Yeah, yeah. No, I've heard that said six or seven megapixels for a, right. for a standard uh, 35 right. millimeter uh, negative. But I've seen people, you know, 22 megapixels. Right. Or, you know. Well, that's true. On a scanner, you're tempted to use much higher resolutions right. when you scan it. So we don't want to see the grain. I mean, well... Certainly, when you see the grain going further, there's no point in going no any point further. In. You, you, you know. It's not to hide the grain. It's just that you're not going to get any more quality right. than you're getting at that point. Right. So here's some of the images you've you've taken. Yeah. Now, the nice the, advantage of shooting it raw is you can now, color, you can white balance, and, look and how stuff quickly like that. I After can the do this. That's the that's the real advantage. Of this is this is click. fast. As long as as quickly as it takes, I mean, you know, it click. It's much faster than trying to scan these. Yeah. So I yeah. can just you know, and they're going right into my. Thing. I, you can set with the utility whether you put it on the uh, flash card or not. Mm -hmm. I'm just going right into the computer. Why not? Yeah. You know. So let's take a look at some of the images. I just want to see how okay. high quality uh, this, these are. All right. Here's now. This was on a. Now, by the way, I didn't clean all my slides. This That's is the other thing you'd want to do is yeah, clean them a little clean bit. Clean all your slides. With a brush. Would you this use a? The, uh, yeah. Yeah. This is the Lauterbrunnen Valley in uh, in Switzerland from a helicopter. Wow. And uh, a number of years that back. That looks great. 
Yeah. I mean, it doesn't look like it needs much processing. No, it can use a little, uh, you know, but... Uh, but you've you got know. it in there. You've got already got it in Photoshop. You've got it in Bridge. So it's very easy for you to do any right. correction you need to do. A lot right. of times, Ectochrome is a little... It'll take a second to, to produce the high yeah. res. The white balance in Ectochrome is a little uh, off sometimes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that, this is actually an opportunity to make that picture look better, yeah. frankly. There it snapped in the look focus. That. that is beautiful. You know. But, uh, How much would you say if I had to start from scratch? Let's say I already have a pretty good SLR. Like maybe I have uh, an SLR like uh, Sean's got the Canon well, Double XTI. If you have the SLR and a macro lens mm -hmm. that'll cover the area of a slide, right. then all you need is a slide holder. Okay. And I've seen them at B and H for like $120. Okay, it's not bad. So yeah. co comparably priced. If you don't have a macro lens, you might have to get one. But they're good to have for pictures yeah. of bees and flowers. Exactly. And you know, stuff like that. Right. All the details on what you would need to make this work online at our website, labwithleo.com. Ray's website is maxwellmultimedia.com. And he swears to us he's going to put lots of stuff up on there. I'm working on it. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. Maybe put some of these pictures. They're pretty incredible. All right, now, speaking of macros, let's see what Sean Carruthers has done with his macro lens. It's a close-up of something you'd commonly find around the lab. What could that be? Very abstract. These are all so abstract. I can't figure it out. Well, I'll tell you what. Think about it. We'll zoom out and find out when the lab continues in just a bit.